Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsports, ScooterWest.com for all things Vespa here in North America. Whether you got a modern Vespa like this or a vintage Vespa, we got you covered for both your parts and accessories. This scooter belongs to my friend, Samantha. She likes to be warm when she rides. Doesn't like a windshield, but she's already got the heated grips that we've covered in many other videos. I'm gonna cover an accessory that's a little different than the traditional accessory for your Vespa. This is a universal accessory that kind of works with any motorcycle scooter with a 12 volt system that can provide an extra 30 watts or two and a half amps. We're gonna put a heated pad inside the seat. You might think, ah, that's for wussies, whatever. But you know what? Every modern car nowadays, even cheap cars have heated seats and they're pretty comfortable. You know, of course, except for on the hot days, you don't want to use it. But even if it's a little cool out, just adding a little bit warmth to, to your body while you're riding, it's gonna help with the comfort of while you're riding. So I'll kind of go over what's included with this um, Saddleman heat kit here. Looks like a heating pad, much like the one you'd find for uh, aches and pains. Just really thin, it's got carbon fiber, uh, heating elements in there. It's got both a low and high. Part number on this is 0821201. It's just under a hundred bucks for this complete setup. So you got the heating pad, you got a relay, you got a harness that can be completely disconnected. And you got this really nice switch that will sandwich between the upholstery. So you can just reach back and go both low and high. I'm not gonna do the full installation video step by step. It's a rather complicated installation as you need to take apart the seat. So you're gonna to need to lift all the staples of the seat cover. So I've already started doing that. I would say there's like 80 or so staples. You're gonna to need to pry those up with a flat blade screwdriver. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the staples all around the whole entire perimeter of the seat. And we'll take the seat apart and I'll do a voiceover and cover the extra steps that I went went through to install this heated pad into Samantha's Vespa Sprint here. So now we're pretty far with the install of the heated pad in the seat. You can see on the side, it'll be on the left side, kind of behind a rider, but in front of where the passenger may sit so their legs would miss the switch. There's the high-low switch that's been installed. And I'll pull back the seat cover and kind of show you what I have set up here before we go back and staple the seat cover back to the, the plastic frame of the seat. So you got the seat cover, it just pulls right off. And you notice there's a plastic uh, film in here. Underneath the plastic film, we went ahead and installed the seat, seat pad. And it has some self-adhesive strips. They don't really necessarily hold in place, but kind of keep it in the area and we had all the way up to the front you can see the heating elements kind of get a little bit of the thighs um, and then obviously the majority area where where you sit you know the rider sits there's a single wire going up in the front and i'll kind of show you how the wiring uh, works on this if i pull this back there's a hole that i carved into the foam and this little uh, escutcheon or, or little bezel that goes around the switch has an, uh, another plastic backer that's been bolted. So it sandwiches between the material. I can't really pull it back because I do have some of the wiring, but you can see the body of the switch. I carved a hole in the foam so it goes right into the, into the seat. So when we get this all tight, you won't feel this. It still has foam all the way around the switch and that's the way it's designed. Then the wiring it's all gonna be between the pad. You can kind of see some of, this is a pocket for where the seat cover would reside. Obviously in the newer models, the seat cover uh, pocket still remains, but they don't include a seat cover. And the seat cover pocket, I put the relay that controls the, um, the temperature all inside this pocket. Also the spare wire, I'll zip tie this all back up and tuck it into the pocket. And believe it or not, there's still enough room if you want to put a seat cover, you know, the uh, rain cover into this little pocket. There's a little bit of the wiring that we'll have tucked to one side and it'll be for a nice tidy install, you know, without having tons of wiring going between the seat. 
We'll get the cover all back in place. I'll get it all centered and then start stapling the cover. And the last bit of wiring is the pair of wires that power the heat, heated seat. So you got red for positive, black for negative. So all the parts that have been installed in the seat are, were included with the kit. The wiring that's on the scooter side, not included with the kit, but it's fairly simple wiring. So both on the Sprint, GTS, and the Primavera, the fuse block is located inside the glove box, right here. And on a GTS, it would be located on the left side. And behind that fuse block is some, some of the thick wiring that powers the fuse block. There's gonna be two colors. There's gonna be red, which comes straight from the battery that's protected by the main fuse. And then there's an orange wire, a thick orange wire. And that wire is only switched on when the ignition's switched on. With a heated seat, you don't wanna ever have the chance of running something like that with the uh, ignition off. You know, typically you wanna run that accessory only when the bike is running. So we tapped into that large orange wire and very important, we put a fuse a holder in series with the orange wire, a five amp fuse. The seat draws about 30 watts, you know, just 35 watts, something just under three amps. So typically, if you have a, uh, something drawn three amps, you wanna rate, put a fuse at 75%. You know, if it can handle five amps, it will, you can put like a little more than three amps through that circuit safely. And five amps will protect the wiring if it shorts. Used 18 uh, gauge wiring and ran the wiring all along the battery through the floorboard and then up through where the seat hinge is. So I have an orange wire here for the positive that only uh, that goes high, you know, with 12 volts whenever you have the ignition on, and then a black and negative. And that goes, you can tie it to the frame ground there's, or the battery ground, which is the black wire on the battery. Um, pretty straightforward. We don't really have a wire kit for this but pretty straightforward, easy wiring to do. We'll go ahead and get the seat cover all buttoned back up, put the seat on, and we'll be pretty much done with this project. So here we got a pneumatic upholstery stapler, or just a staple gun. It shoots, you know, a staple pretty much similar size to a you know, regular paper, you know, desktop paper stapler, but they're much thicker. So these are very shallow. That's very important when you do a seat. Last thing you want to do is put really long staples in and then you sit on the seat and get stabbed by the points of the staple. Uh, this might not be a tool that everybody has. One option is to do, you know, go through all the installation. You'll be able to separate the seat cover. You can go to a upholstery shop and they would have a stapler like this and probably for little money they would be happy to staple the existing cover on it. Or maybe this is a time you want to reupholster the seat. So this, the stapler's got the safety that has to be depressed. I'm not gonna push it in. So once that's depress, depressed, it will allow a staple to fire. So see how it put a staple right there? And they're very shallow, so you don't feel the staple you know, on the other side. And typically, you'll go between the two sides until you get it stapled all the way around. And you probably wanna staple every 30 millimeters, inch and a quarter. Um, if not more. You're not gonna be able to do this with like a regular hand-powered stapler. You definitely need a air or possibly electric-powered uh, stapler to do this job. So go ahead and put the plastic trim pieces of the seat back together. Still functions. And you see I got the seat cover all stapled back in place. And the seat cover's all tight. Needs a little cleaning. And we'll go ahead and attach the seat back to the hinge. It takes uh, two hands to do this. You gotta hold the seat or have a partner hold the seat while you get the screw started.
And you can see there's quite a bit of adjustment to the seat bracket. Uh, you may not want to tighten these all the way down until you get the seat adjusted so the striker uh, catches the seat without any issues. We got the pair of wires. We'll go ahead and make the connections. I put quick connections. Make it easy if you never need to remove the seat. And we'll leave a little bit of slack. Make sure the seat wire doesn't get cut by the bracket there. I'll make adjustments to get the seat latch to work perfect. And once I have it where I need it, I'll go ahead and tighten the screws. And drop the seat bucket back in. Make sure the wire is not pinched. You may want to notch the, uh, the seat bucket. Seat work, latch works fine. We'll clean the uh, upholstery of the seat, and let's see if it works. Turn the ignition on. You got high, is up with the red indication, and then low, which indicates uh, green. And then give it a couple minutes, and you'll feel the warmth come through the seat. Already feel the warmth coming through the seat. And with the switch nice and easy to reach, you can modulate the temperature to your liking. And kind of once it soaks in, you probably turn it off high or on the very coldest nights, you can um, leave it on high. One more easy to install added comfort accessory that not too many people think about, kind of a universal install. As you saw, it's pretty clean, easy to do. So today's a warm, Day, not really an ideal day to have a heated seat on, but maybe you like warm seats on hot days too. Until next time, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, scooterwest.com for all things Vespa. You know, both modern Vespa, vintage Vespa. Pretty easy to install. I'm sorry it wasn't a full do-it-yourself video like many of my other videos, but kind of gives you a good idea of how to install uh, something that's not an ordinary accessory on a Vespa. Check out all our other videos if you haven't subscribed. We have well over 400 videos for both modern and vintage Vespas, mostly how-to videos. I got a couple of uh, road trip videos, especially the Mexico series that we did a couple years ago. Pretty fun videos to watch if you haven't seen them. Just look for Vespa Mexico trip on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Vespa Motorsport. Follow me, Robot Vespa. Party on and ride safe.